This video is brought to you by the Program Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, or PMICE. PMICE is a program management office within Marine Corps Systems Command located in Quantico, Virginia. This video is one in a series of videos PMICE has developed in order to instruct, educate, and assist Marines and sailors in the proper form, fit, function, use, and care of infantry combat equipment being fielded by this program office. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper use and care of the USMC pack. We have incorporated this menu that allows you to quickly access specific chapters of the video. You are not expected to watch the entire video. For example, if you need to know how to don the pack, you would go to chapter 12 at the 1 hour, 15 minute, and 21 second marker in the video. It's been several years since we uploaded the original USMC pack training video. Over those years, we learned quite a bit about how Marines are using the pack, how they're adjusting the pack, and so on. We're going to use those lessons learned in order to redo this video, and we're going to streamline the process of how to assemble it. And we're also going to talk about some of the trends that we've seen over the years that are making it more difficult for Marines to adjust the pack based upon some of the things that they are doing to the pack. Um, so we'll cover all those things. Trends. Some of the trends I want to discuss are Marines being in the wrong torso setting. In other words, if you're pretty tall and you're wearing a pack in the standard setting, that's the incorrect setting for you. It's, you're going to be less efficient with the pack. If the pack comes assembled and you need to know which you have, the standard or the long, here's your key indicator. If you, here's the top handle. If you can see the frame, and I'm going to expose it here, I'm, I'm knocking right on it. You can see it, you can touch it right here. This is set up in the standard torso configuration. It is for Marines that are 5'7 uh, and below. On the other hand, if you notice on this pack, the frame is not here at the top. It's actually recessed down. Watch my pointer go all the way down. I'm still going down. It's about two inches down. Now I can hear it. And if I look down in there, I can see it. This frame is set up in the long torso setting for Marines who are 5'8 and taller. And one that we see quite often, especially at the entry level, is excessive use of tape, where you're putting tape on the loose straps, but it's preventing you from adjusting the pack in the way that it should be adjusted. Inventory. Here you have your USMC pack. As you can see, there are a lot of components. I'm gonna show you what each component is. That way, when you go to supply, if you happen to get it disassembled, you'll know what you're signing for. Let's start in the center. Here we have the main bag. Next we have the assault pack, the hydration system, two hydration pouches, two sustainment pouches, one assault pouch. Here we have the frame, the shoulder harness assembly, the hip belt, two compression straps, two quick release lower half straps, one optional sternum cinch, we have a repair kit, and finally we have the USMC pack instruction card. Assembly in standard torso setting, 5 feet 7 inches and shorter. Before we even assemble the pack, I want to point out that the pack can come in two different configurations. One is the standard torso configuration, and the other one is the long torso configuration. Now you notice I'm using the word torso. There's not a Marine out there that I know that knows his torso length. So what we had to do is come up with a size, your actual height comparison to the torso. And where we've come at is the 5'8 mark. If you are 5'7 and below, we recommend that you should be in the standard torso setting. If you're 5'8 and above, we recommend that you should be in a long torso setting. Now that's gonna vary on different people. Now remember, two Marines could be 5'10 side by side, both 5'10, but one has a longer torso than the other. So we gotta keep that in mind. There's a lot of customization that goes in here. But what I want to show you before I assemble the pack is the torso configuration set up without the bag on it. So what I have here is a standard torso setting. You'll notice that the frame is on line with the top of the shoulder harness assembly. On this one, it's a, the frame is approximately two inches below the top of the shoulder harness assembly. This is for the longer torso setting for the taller Marines. So that is the main difference. To get to this, if you have to change from standard to long or long to standard, you literally have to take the bag off of the pack, take the frame off of the shoulder harness assembly and put it in the appropriate spot. Again, this being the standard and this being the long. 
let's get ready to put the pack together now. Now, before I start assembling it, which would start with the hip belt, I want to point out something on the frames. You notice I have two frames here in front of me. This frame is the original frame. You'll notice that it has holes put in this, what I call the spine of the frame. We did that to reduce weight. Unfortunately, that resulted in a lot of the frames breaking, and a lot of that was self-inflicted because, you know, the way Marines actually would sit on the pack, and we'll discuss that later on how to avoid that. Since then, we've reinforced the frame, and you notice we filled in the holes on the frame. Uh, the frame is much more sturdy with having these holes filled in, so I'm gonna use this frame because most of, them are, of these are still out there. By the way, all the parts that I'm gonna use are right out of supply. Nothing I have here is brand new. I wanna make it as realistic as possible. So this is how I would get it from supply. So all these parts that you're gonna see me assembling today are used. Just like with the torso setting, I said there were two torso settings, a standard and a long. On the hip belt, we have two settings as well. One we call the smiley face, cause you can see the shape of it. And the other one's called the frowny face. On the smiley face, that's how most Marines are gonna wear it. Cause most Marines are above five foot four. So we say that five foot four and above, you should assemble it in what we call a smiley face. If you're a five three or below or of shorter stature, we recommend potentially switching it over. It doesn't work for everybody. Just like with the standard and the long torso settings, you could have two Marines that are five foot two standing right next to each other. One may prefer the frowny face and the other one may prefer the smiley face. For this demonstration, I'm gonna put it on in the smiley face. I'm gonna attempt to put it on upside down so as you're viewing it through your computer, you can see what I'm doing. It'll almost look like point of view. So here's the frame set up in a smiley face, upside down to me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the frame and place it on the hip belt. In a previous video, you're, if, you, if you watch that, you'll notice that we talked about letters and numbers all over the frame. I'm gonna make it much more simple and we're just gonna talk about outboard, inboard, longer strap, shorter strap, and so on. So the first thing is I'm gonna make sure that it's set up in a smiley face. Again, I'm standing, sitting on the opposite side of this. I'm gonna start off with the top horizontal straps right here, these right here. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna assemble it without the frame on it so you can see the process. I'm gonna take the strap and you can see the buckle here. It's got the back end and the front end. I'm going to push it into the back and then it's gonna come right back out the front and then I'll extend the strap out. So it'll look like that underneath the frame. And I'll do that for all four straps. Okay, the top strap is gonna go in this middle slot right here, this being the top strap. So I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna go into the buckle the way I just demonstrated. But here, if you can see, I went to the back of the buckle. Now I'm gonna go to the front of the buckle. I'm gonna bring it out the same slot, the running end, I'll call the running end. It came out the same slot I went in. Now I'm gonna do the bottom slot, the strap, and it's gonna go into the bottom slot. You notice I kept that strap loose, the first one I did. I did that so I have easier access to all my buckles. I went to the back of the buckle, the front of the buckle, and I'm coming right back at the same slot. Now you notice I'm not tightening it up yet. I don't wanna tighten it because it may pull the frame on one side of the lumbar pad to the other, so I wanna keep it centered. So I'm gonna keep that loose. Now I'm gonna come over to the other side. Again, starting with this top strap, I'm gonna go into that center hole, and I'm gonna go into my buckle. Tighten it up just a bit, but not all the way. Now I'm gonna do the bottom one into the bottom slot of the frame, run into the buckle. Now that I have all four running ends out, I'm gonna grab all four of them simultaneously, and I'm just gonna pull them tight. I have two other straps I have to deal with, a horizontal and a vertical. Starting with the horizontal strap, I'm gonna run the strap through the buckles. Okay, so you notice I came through the buckles right there. Now I'm gonna split the buckles in half, and then I'm gonna stop right here after I split it in half, because I wanna show you that these are self-locking buckles. Just like I did when I demonstrated without the frame on how to use those buckles, I wanna demonstrate how you're gonna use this strap. I'm gonna take the running end, I'm gonna split the buckle, and I'm gonna push it in. Now, if I just pull on this thing, it's gonna lock itself. It's not gonna get any tighter. You can see I can yank on it all day and it's not getting any tighter on my hand. What I need to do is what I call walk the slack. I'm gonna form a little loop here. 
I'm gonna pull the slack over to get it tight and then place my finger behind it and then pull it. As I need to make it tighter, I just keep pulling the loop, put my finger behind it and cinch it down. So now I'm gonna finish tightening this buckle up. So as I just demonstrated, I'm gonna form a loop. I'm gonna pull it tight around the frame. I'll pull it out a little bit more. And once I know I can pull it without the running end sliding back through, I can yank it over, put my finger behind it and just tighten it up. I'm gonna do the same thing with the remaining strap. I'm gonna take the buckles and put them through. Grab the strap, come through the buckles, split the buckle. Now this strap is a lot longer, so I have plenty of slack. I don't have to walk the slack. I have plenty where I can just yank it over, put my finger behind it, and make it nice and tight. Now you notice that the lumbar pad is centered right here in the middle of the frame. My straps are tight here. I am in a smiley face configuration for Marines that are five foot four and taller. Now that the hip belt is on, we're gonna attach the compression straps. There's two compression straps. Prior to putting it on, you wanna set it up to where the male buckles are actually facing down when you go to put it on. Which end goes into the frame? We have a twisted loop and a non-twisted loop. The twisted loop is the end that's gonna go into the frame. I'm gonna turn the pack around back towards me to make it easier to go in and so my head's not in the way when I'm assembling it for you. So again, I have the twisted loop is gonna go into this slot and this slot. I have turned the buckles to where the male buckles are pointing down and that they're upside down. So pointing down and upside down. You'll see why afterwards, why that makes uh, sense to do it that way. Again, I'm gonna start with the twisted end. I'm gonna come into this oval slot here. I'm going to take the buckles, the two male buckles, and I'm gonna slide them in to the twisted loop. Both of them will come through. Once both buckles are through, I will cinch the twisted loop onto the frame. Now I'm gonna do the other one. Again, grabbing the twisted loop, ensuring the male buckles are pointing down and upside down to the frame. You notice I'm not trying to stick the buckles through the hole. Just the strap goes through, the buckles will come through. Twisted loop here. Once I'm in, I cinch it down. So now we have the hip belt installed and the two compression straps. The compression straps are gonna attach to the bag here and then we'll be routed through the bag and you'll see when we get to that point. Okay, the next set of straps, also the last set of straps, I'm gonna install all the quick release lower half straps. They're gonna to go to the last remaining outboard slot on the frame, here and here. Just like before, I have a twisted loop. I'm gonna insert it into the frame. Now the easiest way to get this through is to lay the buckle flat. Don't have it closed up like that. Try to get it into that little loop. Actually extend it to lay it flat and then just slide it in and pull it through and cinch the strap onto the frame. Grab the other one, find the twisted loop, go into that slot. Again, it's the outboard, most outboard slot there at the top. I'm gonna lay it flat. I'm gonna stick it through the loop and cinch it nice and snug. We're now at the point where we would assemble the shoulder harness assembly onto the pack frame. Earlier, we talked about having two different torso configurations, standard or long. It all begins with that shoulder harness assembly. If the pack comes assembled and you need to know which you have, the standard or the long, here's your key indicator. If you, here's the top handle. If you can see the frame, and I'm gonna expose it here, I'm, I'm knocking right on it. You can see it, you can touch it right here. This is set up in the standard torso configuration. It is for Marines that are uh, five, seven and below. On the other hand, if you notice on this pack, the frame is not here at the top. It's actually recessed down. Watch my pointer go all the way down. I'm still going down. It's about two inches down. Now I can hear it. And if I look down in there, I can see it. This frame is set up in the long torso setting for Marines who are five, eight and taller. 
Earlier I showed you that we have two different torso configurations and that all starts with where the shoulder harness is attached to the frame. This is how I'm going to attach it for this particular demonstration. It is set up in the standard torso setting, 5.7 and below, as compared to a longer torso setting for 5.8 and above. Later in this video, we will show you how to transition from this to this. And it's a matter of removing the pack, as you can see, taking the frame off of the shoulder harness assembly, moving it down and attaching it to this. All right, here we go. Let's attach the shoulder harness to the frame. Here's the shoulder harness assembly that we're going to attach. I'm going to show you the feature of this. We start off with at the top, we have two load lifter female buckles. Below that, you'll see a set of horizontal straps. And working the way down, you'll see a vertical strap off to the bottom and then a vertical strap here at the top. You'll notice that this one is underneath this channel and this one is not. When we set this up in a standard torso configuration, the vertical straps must be underneath the strap webbing, what, what I call a channel. So I already put it there on this one here at the top. You can see it's already inserted, but I'm going to do this one for you. I'm going to show you, you just simply run it underneath that strap. Now here's this longer one with the buckle on it. I'm going to lift this channel up and I will insert it. So now I have all four vertical straps inserted to a, underneath the channel. Now I want to go back to the female low lifter buckles. Many of the packs that are out there is after they've been used quite often, this load lifter buckle has been broken off, whether it's on this side or this side. Most Marines are right-handed, so they pick up the pack by the shoulder strap, and a lot of times this rips out. When this problem was discovered, we realized we have to replace these buckles. So instead of re-sewing new ones on, we came out with a modification, and that modification simply replaces this buckle, and supply would put it on, or they would give it to you, and you would simply insert the twisted end into the frame, and attach it to the top loop. And if both buckles were missing, you would simply attach one to here and one to here. So this replaces it. So if you get a frame at supply that has this on it, but you also have both of these already on there, you can remove this and not have to worry about it. But if you get a shoulder harness assembly or it happens while, you, while you're in possession of the pack where these break off, you can go to supply and replace it with this or you can go to your repair kit and get another buckle. I will show you how to use that later in the video. Now let's attach the shoulder harness to the frame. Now that the shoulder harness is ready to go onto the frame, I'm gonna set everything up. The way I like to do it is I put the shoulder harness down and I form a V. I have the label of the shoulder harness facing closest towards me. The straps are all laid out. Again, the shoulder straps, I form a V going up with the label closest to me as I sit behind it. And then again, because I'm going into the standard torso setting, I'm gonna lay the top of the frame on line with the top of the shoulder harness assembly. So I lay it down right there. Now in the original video, we kept saying, go into slot five and it's slot six. I'm just gonna say outboard inboard. So outboard, and I'm gonna work my way inboard. So this will be the first strap I put in. Then I'm gonna work my way inboard to this strap. And then finally this strap. It doesn't matter if I start on the left side or the right side. For this demonstration, I will start on the left side. So again, I'm laying it at the top. If I was setting up for a long torso, I would lay it at the second set of horizontal strap. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna come up from the bottom and I'm gonna go into the outermost opening. Coming up from the bottom. Then I'm going to take the next inboard strap. It's this short strap here with the buckles on them. And I'm gonna come up to the next oval slot. And then finally I'm gonna reach under and grab the most inboard strap. I'm gonna pull all three straps out. Now here's where it helps if you put your knee on it lightly. I'm not gonna put all my weight on it. I'm just gonna put my knee there slightly or lightly to keep the straps from falling back under. I'm gonna grab the outermost strap. I'm gonna go into the buckle. I'm going to split the buckle like that. I'm gonna keep it loose. Keep that in mind, keep this loose because if I make this tight, when I go to do the other side, it's gonna be too tight for me to lift it up. So I've only done the top horizontal strap, and again, I kept it loose. 
Now I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to come up from the bottom with the outermost strap, the longest strap. I'm going to work my way inboard. Now that I have all three straps up through the frame, I'm going to take the outermost strap, run it across the frame, insert it into the buckle. Now I'm going to split the buckle like I did before. Now, since I don't have to lift this side up anymore, I'm going to go ahead and make this tight. Just like I showed you earlier, what you want to do is walk the slack, and this is where it comes into play. Because if I just yank this over, this running end is probably going to work its way out. So I'm going to pull it over, pull my slack back a little bit more, and then I'm just going to grab this loop. And now I know I can pull it, and that running end is not going to come back out. So I'll pull it nice and hard, put my finger behind it, and pull the strap. Now I can go back to the other side and tighten it up. You notice how I'm walking the slack, and once I know that I have enough slack here where I can yank this over, I can just simply put my finger behind it, hold it in place, and pull it tight. I'm gonna work my way down. So now I do the next strap. You notice I'm not going into any of these slots here. This is the only one where it goes into the slot. Everything else now is gonna go around it. All these holes are there to reduce the weight of the frame. I'm gonna use the same concept, walk the slack, but since this strap is a little bit longer, I should have a little bit more work to work with. Put my finger behind it, and it's nice and snug. Repeat for the other side. Finally, I'm gonna grab the lower vertical straps. Again, they're not coming up to any part of the frame, only the top ones did. And I'm gonna run it over the frame and secure it to that top vertical buckle. Your shoulder harness has now been attached to the frame in the standard torso setting. Okay, now we're at the step where we're gonna attach the frame and the shoulder harness assembly to the bag. Again, we're doing the standard torso setting, so that'll dictate where the side yib-yab tabs are gonna go, and you'll see that, what I mean about that in a second. All right, so we're gonna start off. The corners of the frame need to rest in the corner of what I call the sleeve of the bag. So I'm gonna start by pushing it under and it, to help keep it in place, we're gonna bring out the female load lifter buckles and we're gonna attach the shoulder strap. That helps, doesn't guarantee that the shoulder harness is gonna stay in place, but it certainly helps. So once I connect those and I'll cinch them down, like I said, I'm gonna concentrate on keeping the corners of the pack inside the corner of the sh uh, sleeve. All right, so now it's easier if I stand it up and we're gonna work our way down the pack. So that's as you're remembering this thing or if you have to teach it to somebody else, remember just once you connect the shoulder straps here, work your way down. So that's the first step. The next step is we're gonna take what we call a yib-yab tab. It's this little tab right here that's gonna go in what I call the ear of the frame. So we're just gonna push it through. And we're gonna pull it. And then we're gonna tug on it to make sure it's fully inserted. We're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. If you're having a hard time finding where the yib yabs are, just look by the handle. It's right in between the loop of the handle. Then we're gonna work down the frame. Ideally, what I would wanna do is work, work my way down and just go to the next strap, but I like to skip this step because if I wrap this strap around the frame, if it hinders me from when I'm trying to do everything I need to do on the bottom. So even though I'm starting from the top and I'm working my way down, I'm gonna skip this strap right here and I'm gonna flip the pack upside down. Now that the pack is upside down, I'm gonna install the other set of yib yab straps. Okay, if you're having a hard time finding this, just look for this big ring right here, it's a D ring. Look for that and it'll be right above it. If the pack is upside down, it'll be right above it. So that's how you find the yib yab tab. And where's it going to go? It's going to go in any one of these three open slots here. For demonstration and simplicity purposes, I'm going to stick it right there. So I get my hand back there. And again, once I put it, I tug on it to make sure I can get to it. While I'm on that side, I'm going to grab the compression strap that I installed earlier, I remember I wrapped it on the frame here. 
while I'm still on this side, I'm going to take one of the two buckles. It's the closest buckle, the closest buckle to the frame. You notice there's two male buckles here. The closest buckle to the frame, I'm gonna attach it to the female buckle that's right below it. This female buckle is attached to the bag. So I'm gonna attach it there, I'm gonna pull it tight. In a minute, I'll run this through here, but I wanna finish this side here. So now I'm gonna to go to the side here. I'm gonna grab the yib yab tab again. If you're having a hard time finding this tab, just look right for where the D-ring is and the tab will be right above it. Like I did before, I'm gonna stick it in one of these three available slots. And for simplicity, I'll just stick it right there. Now I'm gonna grab my other compression strap, get all the twist out of it. And again, the one that's closest to the frame is the one that I'm gonna attach to the bag, that female buckle right there. I attach it, I snug up on it. Now what do I do with these straps right here? What I'm gonna do is go to the PALS webbing, the pouch attachment ladder system here, and I'm gonna insert it into the webbing. Where do I start? I take my buckle, and I'm gonna go to the second from the outside. So here's the outer board one, the second one in. I'm gonna run the buckle underneath. I'm gonna put it all the way through. Give myself a little bit more slack. I'm gonna run it to the next set of PALS webbing. And then finally I'll find the corresponding female buckle and I'll attach it. The ISO mat will obviously go here. So I'm gonna grab the other buckle. I remember earlier I said when I first installed this, I put it on in such a way where these were facing down. The reason why we did that is because now it's facing in the right direction to go a straight line towards that buckle. Had I done it the other way, I would have a twist in there and I would have to work through the twist. So I'm gonna give myself some slack, run it through the second from the end loop. Go to the second row. Find the corresponding female buckle. Click it into place and I'm good to go. Continuing on, I'm going to take the quick release lower half strap that I connected earlier. It was, if you remember, I connected the hip belt and the compression strap and I also connected this strap. There's a little trick to this strap. This is the one where you're going to be able to adjust your shoulder strap. It's going to go into this mechanism right here. As I run this up, I want to make sure that the little plastic piece with the hole in it is facing up. As long as it's facing up, I'll be able to make adjustments using my finger to lift it while I'm wearing the pack. If I don't make sure that it's up, it's going to be upside down and it's going to make it difficult to make the adjustment to loosen it. The quick release mechanism. It's a gate. I got this square piece right here. I just push it in, lift up the gate. You'll hear it click into place. And then I'll take the female buckle or snap and put it onto the male snap, put it in place. And as you can see, because I turned it the right way, I'm able to easily adjust it while I'm wearing it. And do the same thing for the other side. On the next strap, I'm actually going to put it in upside down to demonstrate that though it will still clip in, it's still in there. Because I put it in upside down while I'm wearing the pack, I won't be able to make the adjustment because the buckle is upside down. So even though it goes in, there's still a right way and a wrong way. So I find my slack. I make sure the buckle with the hole in it is facing up. I put it into the slot tug on it to make sure it's secure, and then I fasten the snap. Now that my shoulder straps are attached, I need to finish the last step, and that's to take the straps located here and wrap them around the frame. Again, if your frame is ever gonna break, this is where it's gonna break in this area right here. The holes are there, whether it's the newer frame without the holes or this frame with the holes, it doesn't, you don't utilize any of those holes. Those holes, again, were placed there to reduce the weight. Wrap the strap around the frame. Walk my slack. Once I have enough, pull it tight. Go to the other side.
This pack is now completely assembled in the standard torso setting. Again, standard, I can see and touch the frame right there. Assembly in long torso setting, five feet, eight inches and taller. Okay, you may have just watched me set this up in the standard torso setting. Now I'm gonna set it up in a long torso setting for those of you who go to supply, get it disassembled and you already know because your height, you're over five foot eight, you're gonna set it up in a long torso setting. So let's start there. Because the hip belt, quick release lower half straps and the compression straps are already attached Please refer to Chapter 3, Assembly in the Standard Torso Setting, to learn how to attach these items. In the Standard Torso Setting, we know that we run these vertical straps underneath these loops right here. For the Long Torso Setting, if you get this from supply that looks like this, and you know you're going to set it up in a long torso, you want to remove the vertical straps from those channels. There's the bottom ones, and here's the top ones. And that's the first step. Because we know we're gonna set it up in a long torso setting, it's not gonna be out in line with the top of the shoulder harness assembly. We're gonna move it down to the next set of horizontal straps. We don't need the top two. So I'm going to simply close these off. Now I'm gonna set it up for install. I placed the shoulder harness assembly in front of me. The label is closest to me. This label here is closest to me. I took the shoulder straps and I formed a V to get them out of the way. I've already demonstrated how to put it on to the standard torso setting and that was by placing the top of the frame in line with the top of the shoulder harness assembly. However, since we're going to the long torso setting, I'm gonna slide it down. And on these straps, you'll notice that as I work my weighing board, each strap is longer than the other. So my outermost is longest, then this is the next longest, and finally, this is the shortest. So I'm gonna work outboard in or longest to the shortest. I'm gonna take my outermost strap, bring it up through the hole in the frame. Then I'm gonna grab the next longest strap, again, working my way outboard, inboard. And then finally, I have the shortest of the three straps. And now I'm gonna simply take the longest strap, run it across the frame into the buckle. I run into the buckle, now I split the buckle and I'm gonna keep it loose. The reason I gotta keep it loose is now I need to work on this side. If I made this tight, I wouldn't be able to have all this access to this. So now I'm gonna to switch to this side. Again, using the outermost strap, the longest strap, come up through the bottom. The next strap, come up through the bottom. And then the shortest strap. Now I'm simply gonna again take the outermost strap, run it across the frame, split the buckle. But this time I'm gonna go ahead and make it tight. As I demonstrated earlier on the, in the standard setting, I can't just yank this over because the running end may come out. So I wanna walk the slack. I'm gonna bring it to the point where I think I have enough slack where I can yank it over without the running end coming out. And I think I have that now. So I'll pull it tight. Now I can go back and tighten up the original side, walk in the slack. Once I have enough, I put my finger behind it, cinch it down. Now I need to bring the bottom vertical strap around. And again, if you forgot to pull out the vertical strap from underneath that loop, now it's important to make sure you get it out because if it's under there, it's not gonna wrap around the frame. So it should not be underneath that channel. I wrap it around the frame and go into that top buckle, split the buckle, and this one, I have plenty of slack. I shouldn't have to walk it. I should have plenty. Pull it down, nice and snug. Grab the running end and pull it. Same thing here. This is now set up for a long torso configuration. We're now ready to attach the frame and the shoulder harness to the bag itself. I'm gonna start off by taking the shoulder harness assembly and sticking it into the corner of the bag itself. We call this the sleeve. I'm gonna get the corners through. I'm gonna pull the female buckles through and I'm gonna immediately attach the load of the buckles to them. That helps keep the shoulder harness and the frame come, coming away from the bag itself. Doesn't guarantee it, but it helps. I'm gonna make it tight to help it stay in there. Now I'm gonna stand the bag up 
and I'm gonna work my way down. So I connected the buckles. The next thing I have to do is when we did the standard, we, tuck, we stuck the yib yab tab into the ear of the frame. This time, since it's not lined up there anymore because the frame is down lower, it lines up with this metal ring right here. A little trick to put this in is to picture this as your garage and here's your car. You're gonna stick one corner of the bumper into the garage to get it started. Then you're gonna straighten it out. And then the hard part here is working that ring over that seam right there. I found what works the best is once you get it there, now you wiggle the metal ring over that and then once you get it started, you can just use your thumb and push it over until it catches underneath. Now I gotta do the other side. Again, I'm gonna stick the corner through first. And I'm gonna wiggle the metal ring over the seam. Once I get it started, I can just push it over with my thumb. Once it catches, I'm good. Now instead of working my way down and connecting this strap around the frame, I skip that, which gives me more room to work when I'm working at the bottom of the pack. So I'll flip the pack upside down. I'm gonna grab the yib yab tab, and if you have trouble finding it, like I've mentioned previously, just find that deep metal D-ring and it's right above that. I'm gonna stick it in any one of these three slots that are available. This one is the most accessible. I'm gonna push it in, reach behind it, insert it and tug on it, make sure it's there. Now while I'm here, I'm going to grab my compression strap. Remember earlier, I said it, it helps best when you, the way I first installed it in here to make sure that these were upside down and facing down, the male buckles. That allows this to run perfectly to the female buckle, a straight shot on the bottom of the bag. I'll tug it, and now because I inserted this the correct way, again, it lines up perfectly to route through what we call the PALS webbing, the pouch attachment ladder system. I start from the second one in. So one, two, I insert it. Make it longer. I bring it to the second row of PALS webbing. And finally, I'll connect it right above the sleep compartment zipper. I'll come to the other side, I'll expose everything for you here. I'm gonna make this strap a little bit longer so it can reach to the female buckle at the bottom of the bag, connect it, pull it towards the frame. Continuing with that strap, I find the second from the in slot on my PALS webbing. Again, PALS is pouch attachment ladder system. Pull it through the first row. Make it longer, pull it through the second row. Find the female buckle, and I'm good to go. Now I just have to grab the remaining yib yab tab, stick it in one of the three slots, and as I did before, I stuck it in this top one here. Once I insert it, I give it a tug to make sure it's there. Now I need to wrap the straps that I skipped earlier, wrap it around the frame. If you have the frame with no with holes in it, you don't use any of the holes. Again, those were there just to reduce the weight. Again, if your frame is ever gonna break, it's gonna break here. And we're gonna talk more about the, how to prevent the frame from breaking later on in the video. Finally, I need to attach the quick release lower half strap. If you've seen me do this before on the standard setting, it's the same process. All I need to do is make sure that when I get ready to insert it, the plastic buckle here, right now you can't see, it's the one with the hole in it. I need to turn this thing either way, it could be that way or that way, I just need to turn it so it has the hole facing up. That way, when I cinch it into the quick release and press the button, while I'm wearing it, if I need to adjust the pack, I can do so with the buckle facing up. On this side, I'm gonna demonstrate putting it in the improper way, or the incorrect way. Even though it's upside down, because remember I wanted it with this hole facing up, even though it's upside down, you'll notice 
it will still go into place. I can tug on that, it's still there. But now, because the buckle's upside down, I can't make the adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna ensure that this buckle with the hole in it is facing up. Put it in place, tug on it, snap it. And this is now set up in a long torso configuration. Again, you know it's the long because I can look down and the frame is no longer visible and online with the top of the shoulder harness assembly. It's down about two inches. If I pull it apart, you can actually see it way down there. That's how I know it's in a long torso setting. Adjusting the glide buckles. Now that the pack is assembled, before I go over the features, I wanna show you one quick adjustment that all the packs should have. Coming right out of the factory brand new, sometimes these buckles right here, sometimes I call them M buckles because they look like the M buckle on the alpha blouse. We have a seam right here where my fingertips are. You notice one of the buckles is about two inches above the seam and the other one is about four inches above the seam. I wanna keep them the same. I like calling them zeroing out the buckles, just like you zero out a weapon, I wanna zero out these buckles. So we're gonna leave this one where it is, approximately one or two fingers above that seam. I wanna bring this one down. It's a simple process. We just disconnect the male to female buckle. You get yourself some slack. And now all I have to do, I like putting it on my knee, and is I just push the material of the strap itself. Again, here's the male buckle. I'm pushing the material into the slide buckle there to form a loop. Once I have a loop, whatever direction I need to move this buckle, I just pull at the base of that side of the loop. So in this case, I want to move the buckle down. So I'm going to put my finger inside here, my thumb or finger, doesn't matter what you use. I'm going to push or pull however you're turning it. So in this case, I'm going to pull it, but I'm going to pull at the bottom of the loop. So I'm going to grab it, I'm going to pull and watch the buckle come with me. If I need to go that way, in this case, if I was trying to go raise the buckle, I'm going to put my hand in the loop, I'm going to pull at the base, and I'm just going to put pressure on it and the buckle will go that way. So I want it to be on line with this one. So I'll put them side by side. I'll pull the buckle or pull the loop. You notice I'm not touching the buckle at all. Everything is on the loop. I'm just going to pull it down, compare it. And they're right about perfectly even. Now I just have to get rid of that loop, reconnect the male to female buckle, cinch it down, and I'm good to go. Transition from standard torso setting to long torso setting. We're gonna make the assumption that you went to supply and got your pack completely assembled, and it was assembled in the standard torso setting. I can see a knock on the frame right there. I'm five foot nine, I wanna switch it over to the long setting. I'm gonna take, follow the steps from starting at the top of the pack and work my way down the pack, and we're gonna transfer it over from standard to long. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the load lifter buckles at the top. Then I'm gonna work my way down. I have to remove the yib yab tab from the ear of the frame. Do it on that side. Turn it over, and again, I'm working right next to the handle. Working my way down the frame, I'm going to undo these straps that keep the lower half of the pack or wrapped around the frame. So I started from here. I worked my way to the next step with the yib yabs. I unwrapped these straps. I flipped the pack upside down. I'm going to remove the side yib yab strap. And again, if you're having a hard time finding this, find the D-ring, work your way up, and it's the next strap up. While I'm on this side, after I disconnect that yib yab strap, I disconnect the compression strap. Come over to here, disconnect the compression strap, and remove the other remaining yib yab tab. I'm now able to remove the frame and shoulder harness assembly from the bag. I'm still connected by the compression strap and that's okay. It's easier to put everything back together. So I'm gonna stay connected. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any twist. You notice that the lines aren't twisted at the bottom. I keep a straight line there. Now I just have to undo these straps here. There's no set method on how to do it. You can start from this side, this side. 
Just know that there's six buckles, three on this side and three on this side. You have to do all, undo all six. Okay, now that I have the six buckles undone, I'm gonna remove the shoulder harness from the frame. And remember, we're going from here down to here. So I need to set up my shoulder harness assembly. I know I'm not gonna use the top straps anymore, so I'm gonna close those off. Prior to closing those off, I'm going to remove the four vertical straps that are tucked under these channels just by simply pulling them out. Now I'm gonna close off the top straps. I don't have to make them tight. If you watched the scene earlier where I did it from scratch, you'll notice that you just put them there just to get them out of the way. Okay, still connected. I'm gonna put this behind me here. I'm gonna lay my shoulder harness assembly down. I'm gonna take my frame I'm gonna place it on top. Now again, instead of placing it where it just came from on, on line with the shoulder harness assembly at the top, I'm gonna to move it to the bottom. I'm still gonna work my way outboard in, longer strap to shorter strap. Outboard, it doesn't matter what side I start on, this side or that side. I'm going to the next longest strap. And then I'm working my way inboard to the third strap for this side. This strap is the first strap I'm gonna use and I'm gonna keep it loose. The reason I'm keeping it loose because I wanna have enough slack to get to the other side. Again, working from the outboard in, I'm coming from underneath the frame, going to the next longest strap. And then finally the third strap. Have all three straps exposed work my way across the frame. Now again, this one I'm gonna do tight because I don't have to worry about not lifting the other side anymore. So I walk the slack, find enough, pull it over. Now I can go back and tighten up this side. Now I'm gonna bring the straps around. The strap is much longer at this point. So I have plenty of slack. Now I'm ready to reinsert it back into the bag. I'm gonna turn everything back around. I'm gonna verify one more time that I don't have any twists. By twists, I mean like that. I have a straight line. I can now take the corners of the shoulder strap or the uh, harness and stick it into the corners of the pack. I'm going to take my Load lift the buckles on my shoulder strap and connect them to the buckles that I just pulled through. I'm gonna cinch it down. Mainly I'm doing this so as I'm manipulating the pack, the corners of the frame don't fall out. So now I'm gonna follow the steps I originally did. I'm gonna stand the pack up. I'm gonna work my way down the pack. Now instead of sticking the yibyab in the ear of the frame like we did in the standard, I'm gonna stick it in this metal ring right here. There's a little trick to doing that. I call it parking the car in the garage. So instead of going straight into the garage, you're gonna put the corner bumper in and get that started and that'll give you something to grab. Now you have to work the seam that's on this yib yab tab through that metal ring. The best way to do it is wiggle the metal ring over the seam and get one end of it over. And then once you have one side of it over, you can now push it with your thumb until it goes over the tab on the yib yab tab. Now I gotta go to the other side. I'm gonna bring the corner in first to get started. Now I can thread it through. Now the work here again is on that metal ring. I'm just gonna wiggle it back and forth. And then I'll push it over the seam. You see now I have enough of it there. I can just yank on it. Sometimes the needle nose pliers works best to get that over, especially if this has been used for a while and it's swolled up, dirty, dry, dirty, dry, uh, wet, dry. Um, 
it's easier with a needle nose pliers. You can just tank on it, tug on it a little bit. All right, so now I got to work my way down. Like I did before, I'm going to skip this step of wrapping this around because it gives me more room to operate with the pack uh, as I'm assembling the rest of it. So I'm going to skip this, flip it upside down. I'm going to find that yib yab tab again. I'm going to insert it into one of these three open slots. Pull it through, tug on it to make sure it's secure. I'm going to reattach my male to female buckle. Now, because the frame is sitting lower on this, I have to extend this strap out just a little bit in order to reach. And I pull it tight again. Same thing on this side. I came from the standard, now I'm going to the long and the bag is further down the pack. So now I have to extend this out a little bit. Find my female buckle, connect it and I can tighten it up again. And then I got to work the other yib yab tab right here. Again, anytime you have a hard time finding it, just look for that D-ring, it'll be right next to it. Secure that in there, tug on it. And then finally, just wrap these two straps around the frame. And that completes the transition from standard to long. Now you notice again, when I started, I could see the frame. And now the frame is about two inches below the shoulder harness assembly. I actually have to look in there to find it. That's how I know I have a long torso configuration on my USMC pack. Configuring the hip belt for shorter statured personnel. Let's talk about short stature Marines and sailors for a minute. By short stature, I'm referring to Marines and sailors that are right around 5'3 and shorter. Over the years, we've heard complaints where at, uh, for Marines and sailors in that height range is that the hip belt feels like it's below their hips. So what we've come up with is a concept of taking the hip belt off, raising it on the frame, or taking the hip belt off and flipping it over and then reattaching it, either where it was or even higher on the frame. Any one of those combinations can work. As you can see, I'm starting out with a hip belt that's in the smiley face configuration. This is for Marines that are five foot four and taller. Again, five foot three is kind of where we say you should at least try this. First step of taking the hip belt off is I gotta give myself a little bit more room, so I'm gonna remove these straps. Removing these straps has nothing to do with taking the hip belt off. It just gives me more room to work. Next step was to turn the pack upside down. We need to find that side yib yab strap, and again, if you have a hard time finding it, just find that metal ring and it'll be directly above that. So I reach behind the frame, pull it out. While I'm here, I disconnect this compression strap. And you can see that gives me a whole lot more room there. So let's do the same thing the other side. Find the yib yab strap, disconnect the compression strap. And now I have all this room to work with. Okay, I just need to remove all these straps. I'm gonna start off with removing this vertical strap here. Then I'll move this, remove this other strap. Turn it up. See it better? And now we have two straps on this side and two on this side that we need to remove. Notice where they're located. I have three slots here. Here's my quick release lower half strap at the top one, and then I have these other two slots here. When I take the hip belt off, I'm gonna be mindful of where these slots are because I can use any one of them. So all I have to do is reach in, pop the tension on this strap, the next one, come over to the other side. And now the hip belt comes off. Here you can see we have the hip belt removed and it's still in the smiley face configuration. For those Marines and sailors who are right on the cusp of needing it or not needing it, or only need to move it up about an inch, instead of flipping it where that might be too extreme, we can leave it in the smiley face configuration, but only move it up about an inch on the frame. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Before I go any further though, I'm gonna remove these two straps. You don't have to remove these. I'm just gonna remove it so it makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take the hip belt and put it down in a smiley face configuration. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing. Remember, the hip belt came from these two slots here. If you don't need to completely flip it, 
All you have to do is move it to the next two slots. Now to do that, obviously you see we have to remove this, so I'm gonna show you how to remove this real quick. You know, pop the quick release. Simply remove this and you can go back and see how we did this during the initial assembly. Now it's out of the way. Now I would reattach to the bottom, again taking the twisted loop, sticking it in the frame, lay the buckle flat, stick it through the twisted loop, pull it through and cinch it down against the frame. Okay, now I'm going to lay the frame back down. So again, I came from these two bottom slots here. Now I'm just going to raise it slightly. This will give me about an inch higher. Starting with the top strap, I'm going to go into that top slot. I'm going to go into the buckle. And if you can't see what I'm doing, go back to the initial assembly where we put the hip belt on. I'm going into the back of the buckle. The front of the buckle. And you notice I'm going to take the running end and I'm going to stick it right back out the same slot. And then I'm going to go to the other strap. Come into this slot, find the buckle, attach it, go to the front of the buckle, and run it right back out. You notice I haven't made it tight. Now I would switch it to the other side. I would do the same thing. I gotta take this strap off. So now I'm back on the other side. I'm gonna take this top strap, go into the loop. Okay, just like we did in the initial assembly of the hip belt, I'm gonna grab the four running ends, I'm gonna tighten them up, and I'm gonna grab the horizontal strap that goes around the lumbar pad. I'm taking this strap, coming up through this slot. Make it nice and tight. And then I would reattach everything. If leaving it in the smiley face configuration wasn't enough to raise it up higher onto your hips, the next step is to flip the hip belt. So we're gonna flip it around from smiley to frowny face. And you remember, we moved this quick release lower half strap to the bottom slot. We can leave it there and we're gonna use these two slots and we're gonna attach it. We'll do it exactly how we did it before
The hip belt is now reattached in the frowny face configuration. Prior to putting the bag back on, I need to reattach my compression straps that I took off only to make it clearer for you to see. Now that my compression straps are reattached, I need to reattach the bag. Flipping the pack upside down. First thing I'm gonna do is find my yib yab tab. Again, it's right above the ring. I'm gonna stick it into that available slot right here. And while I'm here, I'm gonna grab my compression strap and reattach it to the bag. And I'll just pull it towards the frame. Reattach my compression strap, pull it towards the frame. Find my yib yab tab, attach it to the frame. Two more steps. Need to reattach the strap that wraps around the frame. And the last step will be to reattach my quick release lower half strap. When you put it in, make sure the little plastic piece with the hole is facing up. That allows you to adjust the pack as you're wearing it. On this side, I'm gonna do it incorrectly on purpose. Remember, I keep saying that the little plastic piece with the hole in needs to be facing up. I'm gonna show you that if I do it upside down, it will still work. It's still locked in there, but I won't be able to adjust it while I'm wearing it. So I need to turn it one way or the other, reinsert it, tug on it, make sure it's in there. Now you can see because I inserted it the right way, I can adjust it as I'm wearing it. This hip belt is now flipped for those Marines and sailors that are of shorter stature. Features of the pack. At the top, we have a carrying handle. It's one of three carrying handles. So there you go there. Right next to that, we have our female buckles. The inboard ones were designed originally to accept the male buckles of your shoulder straps. This is your low lifter buckles. You're gonna hear me talk about later when we go to don the pack that a lot of Marines find it beneficial to take these buckles and put them on the outside. Regardless of how you wear it, always wear it to wear whether you're on the outside or you're inside, you're, just, you're the same on both. So again, I can come to the outside. Whichever buckles are not being used for your load lifters, the remaining two female buckles, those are used to attach your assault pack and I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. So working our way through the rest, I'm gonna switch down. Again, we know that this is our load lifter buckles attached to our shoulder straps. Here we have a sternum cinch. Highly advisable to always use this, whether you're wearing body armor or not. So that's your sternum cinch. Working our way down, we have a quick release. To pull a quick release, you simply just pop that strap and there you go. I'm gonna reinsert it. Before I reinsert it, a lot of people always ask, what is this for? The purpose of this is if your quick release mechanism breaks, this whole thing goes away, you can now remove this portion of the quick release lower half strap and just run the strap straight to this mechanism here. So you'll still be able to attach your shoulder strap, you just won't have the ability to quick release. So this is just a backup in case the quick release mechanism breaks. The quick release lower half strap is connected to the lower portion of the frame. Here we have our hip belt. Good feature about here is instead of having to pull back when you're wearing the hip belt, you just pull it forward. This will be demonstrated more during the donning and adjustment portion of the video. I'm gonna switch over to this side of the pack. As I work my way down, you see we have an open sleeve here. You can stick tubes in there. It has a compression strap at the top and one at the bottom. That's identical on the other side. I have this compression strap here at the top and another one at the bottom. You'll notice that there's PALS webbing, whether you call it Molly or PALS, again, pouch attachment ladder system. It's so you can attach any of the four or five pouches 
that uh, you may want to put on the pack. Continuing on from with the lid of the pack, you notice that we have PALS webbing here as well. We have a place for a name tape. We have another zipper here that gives you access to the lid, but we could also come from this side and you'll notice that the lid, the inside is made out of mesh. That's so you can put wet items in there, they'll dry faster, and it also helps reduce the weight. If I open up the lid on a brand new pack, this is where your instruction card will be placed and that optional sternum cinch that we'll just talk about later. Once I open the pack up, you'll notice that I have a set of drawstrings here with barrel locks on them, here and here. As we look inside the pack, you'll notice that there's a radio pouch with a compression strap on it. Close to the back, center between your shoulder blades, that's where the heavy stuff would go and that's why the radio pouch is in that position it, it, that it's in. You also have another strap compression strap that'll come this way to help secure a radio or any other device you may have inside the radio pouch. Inside the bag, it goes down further. It has a shelf, and I'm gonna demonstrate the shelf from opening up the sleep compartment. You have a zipper that will have zippers from both ends. The shelf that I was referring to earlier, it's right here. So I can separate the items that are in my sleep compartment from the items that are in my main compartment. So all I have to do is zip this. So now everything in my sleep compartment is separated from everything in my main compartment. I can still access it from the corners here. And there's my sleep compartment. Within my sleep compartment, I also have a compression strap so I can cinch my sleep bag or any other items that are in there. And then again, I can zip it up. Compression straps to hold everything in place. Okay, one of the last things I wanna show you on this is earlier you heard me talk about this D-ring when I was referencing how to locate the yib -yap tab. Okay, the purpose of the D-ring is if your frame breaks and you have to run the quick release lower half strap, if the frame isn't there, you can run it, take this off of the frame and run it right to here. So this is your backup in case of frame. We, earlier we spoke about the backup in case of quick release breaks. We also have a backup in case your frame breaks. You can run this strap right to this loop right here. Now we're ready to talk about the assault pack. Just like I did with the main bag, we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. We have the carry handle on the top. Connected to the strap of the carrying handle, you'll see two access points and you'll have some cutouts. This is so you can run an antenna or drinking tube or anything that you want to run out of these holes. We have a waterproof zipper at the top. You'll notice on the waterproof zipper that on one side of the pack, it only goes down that far. However, on the other side of the pack, it goes down almost the full length of the pack. And that's so in case you have to just reach in and grab something way at the bottom, you don't have to open up the entire pack. With inside the, in, uh, the pack itself, you have another radio pouch with a compression strap. You have a mesh pocket here. We open up to the outside, we have another pocket with another zipped mesh pocket. As you can see, we have plenty of PALS webbing here. Now let's turn it over to the other side and look at the features here. Here we have our shoulder straps. We have a sternum cinch. We have a smaller version of a hip belt. Another feature we have is the ability to disconnect the shoulder strap and stow it when we're attaching the assault pack to the main pack. And I'll show you that in a second. But to stow them, you just disconnect it as I just did and stow them behind the padding here. And the other one is exactly the same thing. And then when you disconnect it from your assault, uh, main bag and you need to wear it again as an assault pack, you just pull it out. Just allows it to sit on the, on the main bag's lid a lot easier if the straps are stowed. Attaching the assault pack. As you can see here, I already stowed the shoulder straps. I've stowed one half of the waist belt, and I'm gonna show you just to simply stow the other half. There's a little opening right here in the bottom corner. Just take your waist strap and stow it there. Now I'm gonna turn the 
assault pack so that the, it doesn't matter really which way you do it, but if you ever had to open it up while it was attached, it's easier to have the side with the longer zipper at the top. So first thing I need to do is access my male buckles on all four corners. And I'm gonna find the corresponding female buckles on the lid of the pack. So here it is, it's right by the zipper. Attach it there. Attach it there, and then at the top of the pack, I attach it to which other, whichever buckles you're not using. In this case, I'm using the outboard buckles for my shoulder straps. I'm gonna use the inboard buckles to connect my assault pack. There you have it. Hydration system. Okay, here we have our hydration system. It comes with its own carrier, and I'm gonna show you how you can use it with or without the carrier. But the features are it has a carrying handle at the top. It has shoulder straps with a sternum cinch on it as well. On the back side of it, you'll notice that I can access the bladder by undoing the clip, and there's the bladder. Here's my fill hole. Working my way down, I have an outside pocket. Within this pocket, you should find four Grimlocks. Most people call them carabiners, but they're officially called a Grimlock. This is so I can use on the four corners to attach it to any other pal's webbing, whether it's onto my body armor, or onto my pack, my assault pack, or so be it. But that's, that's where you'll find these stowed in there. There should be four of them. There's also a spare one in, in the uh, repair kit. If I need to access the bladder itself, I open up the side and I can take the bladder. I can replace the tube by just disconnecting from there. If I don't want the tube to come out over the top and I want it to come out the side, so let's say I'm wearing it and I want the tube to come from underneath my arm instead of over my shoulder, I can actually run the tube back out and have it exit from the side of the pouch and that way it'll be coming from underneath my arm. I could connect it with the clip, with the alligator clip and just use it that way. Finally, let's talk about the drinking tube and the bite valve. The tube itself is covered and protected. Here you can see that the alligator clip can slide anywhere along the drinking tube that you want it. We have an on-off valve here. We have a covered bite valve. If you need to replace that, you can simply press this button and you can put a new bite valve on it. Attaching pouches. Here we have the five pouches that come with the USMC pack. We have the assault pouch, we have the two hydration pouches, and two sustainment pouches. I'm gonna start off with the assault pouch. The most common area to put it on is the assault pack itself. You can put it here, you can put it down here. For simplicity reasons, I'll show you it to you right here. As you can see, it's got four retention straps. It's just a matter of over, under, over, under as you navigate through the PALS webbing. I'll only attach the one here. It's best if you work your way across instead of doing one because then it gets tight as you're working up. So as I go here, then I would go here, here, and then here, and then I would just keep alternating from the assault pack back to the pouch. And then I would go back to the assault pack itself and I would just go from here to here and work my way across. And at the end, it'll look like that. Again, it can go here, it can go here. It could go on your body armor. It can go on the pack and go anywhere you want it to go. Just like the assault pouch, you could put the sustainment pouch and the hydration pouches anywhere you want. The common place is right here on the back of the pack using these PALS webbing. You'll notice that on the hydration and this sustainment pouch, it's got two sets of straps, two at the top and two at the bottom. All you have to do is find where you want it located, and let's say it's right there. I'm gonna run these straps here. And then I'll just molly it this way through here. And then when I get to the bottom, I'll do the same thing. And again, it can go here. You can put it on the side. It doesn't matter where it goes. Here we have one of the two hydration pouches. Typically, the hydration pouch is best suited if it's placed on the side of the pack. That way, in case you throw the pack down on its back, you're not worried about crushing the bladder itself. 
So if I place it on the side, just like the sustainment pouch, you have a set of straps, connecting straps at the top and at the bottom. You just put, place them onto the pal's webbing. Once it's attached, you wanna take your bladder, insert it into the pouch, and you'll notice that there's a hook at the top. That hook goes to this piece of 550 cord right here, and that prevents the bladder from just sinking to the bottom of your pouch. So here's how it's connected. The reason why there's two, you're only gonna get one bladder, but you could have these things pre-positioned. You could have one on your pack, the other one on your assault pack, the other one on the back of your body armor. Doesn't matter where you put it. Donning. The two most important takeaways when working with the pack are one, being in the right size pack to start with, and two, how you put the pack on. Before I demonstrate donning the pack, I wanna talk about the location of the load lifter buckles. Here you can see I have them on the inside and that's how it was originally designed to be done. Over the years, we've noticed that a lot of Marines find it more comfortable to be in on the outside and there's nothing wrong with doing that. As long as you, if you put one on the outside, you put the other one on the outside and vice versa. If one's on the inside, put the other one on the inside. I'm gonna take them to the outside right now and it's just simply a matter of undoing the side release buckle and then reconnecting it. Before I actually put the pack on, there's a couple of steps I like to do first. And that, the first one is to loosen up all the straps that I'm gonna need to don it. The other step is I make sure all the other straps that I'm not gonna need to don the pack are actually secured. And for instance, the side straps here. I don't wanna be looking for my shoulder strap and find this strap. So I wanna make sure all the other straps that I don't need are connected. All right, so before I put the pack on, I'm gonna loosen up all the straps from when I previously had it on. Again, I don't wanna be searching for this one, especially if I have a heavy pack on. So I loosen up my hip belt, then I loosen up my sternum cinch about halfway, and then I definitely loosen up my shoulder straps. It'll be looking like trying to get in the pack with alligator arms if I try to do it down here. And this is where that tape rolls in. I'm gonna mention that again while I'm here, take advantage of this, is if you put tape on this running end and you secure it here, I can't loosen it up, which prevents me from putting the pack on the right way. So that's one of the trends I talked about earlier. All right, so I'm gonna loosen my shoulder straps up. And now I think I'm ready to go. Now, before I stand up and actually put this on, I'm gonna demonstrate a different method. And one of those methods are, if for a very heavy pack, what you can do is put it on your knee, whether you put it there or somebody else gets it onto your knee. I'm just gonna demonstrate going from my knee to my back because once it's on my back and I stand up, the process after that is the same for no matter how you get it up there. So again, for a very heavy pack, you can get it onto your knee Prepare your arm to go through here, and now just swing it around. And now that it's on your back, you can hold it in place, and then just simply stand up, and all the adjustments after that will follow what I'm getting ready to show you. Okay, now that my pack straps are loosened up, be ready to don the pack. I'm gonna reach down and grab the handles. If it was really heavy, but not heavy enough to start off on the ground on my knee, I could actually put it on my knee here and just kick it up and over. But this one's not too heavy. If I need a little momentum, I better just get a swing going. I get it up and over. Take notice of the iliac crest, otherwise known as the top of the hip bone. He's gonna wrap the cutout portion of the hip belt around the iliac crest. Next, he's gonna buckle the hip belt, pulling the left and right strap simultaneously to keep the pack centered on his back. While still bent over, balancing the pack on the center of his back, he's gonna connect the chest strap. He'll make it snug, he could always loosen it up later. Again, while still bent over, he's gonna tighten up the shoulder straps. He's gonna make them snug, but not too snug. As soon as he stands up, he's gonna smoothen out the material to make sure there's no bunching, which would cause a hot spot. And then he's gonna re-tighten the hip belt. Lastly, he's going to snug up the load lifter buckles. He's going to bring the pack closer to his back, closing up any big gaps. Here you can see we're using the sternum cinch. When you use the sternum cinch, it prevents the shoulder straps from working their way into the armpit. You don't want the shoulder straps going into your armpit because as you keep tightening it up, it's just going to cut the circulation off. As you can see, the hip belt is centered on his stomach. The hip belt is flat. And the most important part is that 
The hip belt is resting around the iliac crest. The iliac crest is, is going to be centered on the cutout of the hip belt. Here you notice the load of the buckle. He snugged it up, but not overly snug, and it brought the pack to his body. Here you can see, once again, that the load of the buckle, he doesn't have a, a gap here, and all he had to do is snug this up one time, and it closed up that gap. But again, don't overly snug it up, because then it'll come off the padding of the shoulder strap. You notice he's on the inside set of buckles on his load lifter buckles. We've noticed over the years that many Marines will want them on the outside because it's much more comfortable. It's individual preference. I'm gonna take his, I'm gonna put him on the outside. You can do it while you're wearing the pack, just have your buddy do it. It's almost impossible to do this on your own. Make sure you close the gap. I'm taking them from the inside, moving them to the outside. And again, it's personal preference, but the key is if you have one shoulder on the outside, make sure the other one's on the outside. Either have them inside or outside, keep them the same. Doffing. For both the emergency and standard doffing methods, always unfasten the sternum cinch and hip belt first. Attaching the optional sternum cinch to body armor. Here we have the optional sternum cinch. Even though the pack comes with a built-in sternum cinch, we offered up this one just in case the location of the sternum cinch, the way it sits on the pack, doesn't fit just right, you have the option to use this. It comes with the pack, not with the body armor. Here's what it looks like when it's all completed, but I need to separate this to four parts. So I'm gonna pull out the plastic clips. There's one, there's the other, and then I'm gonna pull the quick release to separate the two ends of the straps. It doesn't matter if this strap is on this side or on that side. What matters is that when you first lay it out, you lay it out outboard with the female portion of the clip or the snap facing up. So this is what I mean by outboard. Here's the snap. This would be inboard towards the, the vest. I wanted to make sure it goes outboard. So I'm gonna do that on that side. And the same thing on this side. Here's the snap, it's facing up. So there's a difference. That's down, this is up, I want it up and outboard. I'm gonna take one of my two plastic clips here and I'm gonna insert it into the outermost portion of my PAL's webbing. So that's gonna be right here. I'm gonna go into there, then I'm gonna set this up. Now, if this is too low, I can go to the outermost portion here, but for demonstration purposes, it's easier to show it here. But I can absolutely use this slot and this slot here. But for, like I said, for demonstration purposes, it's easier to see it down here. So once I insert that in there, now I'm gonna insert it into the actual sternum cinch itself. And I have to manipulate the plastic piece through there. So it went into the top one, on top of the second one, but into the strap. And now it comes, comes out the third or bottoms out on the third row here. And then I snap it into place. Do the exact same thing here the outermost one. I start it by putting it in there, that's step one. I put my sternum cinch right below it, manipulate it through. I get my finger in here to open this third row up and I get the plastic piece to work its way through. And now I check it to make sure I can cinch it. And that's how it'll look. When we go over donning and adjusting, you'll see this actually being used on a body. But your shoulder straps would be inside there. To open it up, pull the quick release, and there you go. Donning while wearing body armor. Prior to donning the pack, you see the Marine opens up his hip belt, the sternum cinch, and the shoulder straps. He places the pack high on his back and he immediately reaches for the hip belt, fastens the hip belt and snugs it up. Next he is going to fasten the sternum cinch that comes with the pack. 
He does so in order to be able to free up both hands so he can wrap the optional sternum cinch around both shoulder straps. As you're working the optional sternum cinch, ensure that the straps of the optional sternum cinch are above the adjustment buckle on the shoulder straps. Once the optional sternum cinch is attached, he will then undo the sternum cinch that comes with the pack. His next step will be to tighten up the shoulder straps. He will then stand straight up and re-tighten the hip belt. Then the one-time adjustment of tightening up the load lifter buckles. Manufacturer defects, load lifter buckles, and quick release. What I want to talk about now is some of the manufacturer defects that we've had to deal with over the years, deal with and overcome. One of them is the female load lifter buckles on the shoulder harness assembly breaking off. It'll be the one or two. Most of the times it's this side, and it's because most Marines are right-handed. They'll pick up the pack by the shoulder straps, and it'll rip this off. So to overcome that, Supply, earlier I showed you that they may or may not put this alternate strap wrapping around the frame and it'll take the place of this buckle if it's missing. We're going to make the assumption that Supply didn't put it on or it came off while you were using the pack and how you can overcome that. So again, this is what it looks like with both there. This is what it looks like when both of them are missing. So all you have to do, and I'm going to use this pack as an example, this one actually has all four buckles that we talked about earlier all four female buckles. You need two for the shoulder straps and you need two for your assault pack. So we're gonna tuck this in one, this one away as if it wasn't there. And then you're gonna go to the repair kit and you're gonna find this buckle right here. It has an opening on it. You're gonna go to whichever side is missing, the outboard strap that is not attached to the shoulder harness assembly, it's actually attached to the bag itself. And typically we don't see this one ripping off. The ones that rip off, again, are gonna be the ones that attach to here, not here. So all you gotta do is find this buckle, open the gate, slide it onto the back side of the existing buckle, and then pinch it shut. So now I can take my shoulder straps for my load lifter buckle, attach it here, and now this one will be where I attached my assault pack. And I would do the same thing to this side. Another issue we've noticed over the years is the fact that on some of the packs, the snap is sewn on in an improper place. In other words, instead of perfectly aligning the male and the female, the female snap is sewn a little bit too low, which causes the gate of the quick release to open up when you attempt to snap it. And what we see is Marines putting tape around the snap. If you run into that problem, and yes, tape will correct your problem, but you don't want to put it around the snap. What you want to do is put it around the gate to prevent it from opening. And what I mean by that is you want to stop this gate from opening. So this is where you're going to put the tape. Wrap the tape around this mechanism to prevent this from opening. And you can see the picture off to my side that shows exactly what that looks like. Marine Corps Systems Command produced this video in order to demonstrate the proper use of the USMC pack. There are several other training videos on Syscom's YouTube channel that demonstrate the proper form, fit and function of select infantry combat equipment such as the new plate carrier Generation 3. Go check them out. For more information regarding the USMC pack or any other infantry combat equipment, please contact the program office at pm underscore ice at usmc.mil.